Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1970s. Wild dogs got themselves a taste of human blood. Ain't nobody going to be safe out on the island. We get together or they wipe out the island. You go call the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is episode 224, recorded on September 11th, 2024. Gruesome Magazine. Oh my gosh, I got a case of the gables. I am your host, Doc Rotten. This podcast about horror films released between 1970 and 1979. Each episode, my co-host and I will take a look at, we'll tackle another's even. Uh, we'll tackle another classic or not so classic film from this wonder scrooby, uh, gory and influential decade. I, st- I can't stop that. Can't stop that. All right, with me this week is my co-host, Jeff Moore. Jeff, hi, to and sir. I'm doing great. Just outstanding in my field again Mm. (laughs) actually it's not my field it's my mother-in-law's field children of the corn all right all joining us tonight geezer of the corn oh no joining us tonight is bill mulligan writer director special director rue an all-around nice guy and published author of rum a tale of terror (laughs) in 3d (laughs) <laughs> How you doing, sir? I'm doing better. I had a touch of uh, virus that we will not mention uh, recently, but uh, I'm on the upswing. And I may occasionally mute my mic so I can, and you'll see me in the back doing like I'm coughing up a hairball, but I'm just coughing, probably. Mm. We, can, we can only hope for a timely freeze. There you That's go. My, oh, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Don't push it. Don't push it. Don't, it'll Put happen. Nice flat on the screen right there. Oh, that'd be great. Don't, don't make that face. It'll stick that way. That's what my mom always says. Don't make me laugh. That makes me <laughs> Also joining tonight is Chad Hunt, comic arts ghost of decades of horror, the classic era, and the 80s. Chad is a super duper dude. How you doing, sir? I am super fantastic like bubble plastic. Mm. Ooh, I remember I, that. that. That's kind of awesome. That's kind of awesome. I yes. had it. I had it as a kid. Love that. May, may all the Hulks twerk in your direction. Twerking Hulk. That's yes. one thing I never thought I'd get through life without seeing was that. <laughs> hey, Nobody's going to know what we're talking about. but Chad, did you ever take your stretch Armstrong and like tie him between two cars and see just how long he really could stretch? No, but I, what I did do... Oh, that was just cut, me then. I cut one of his hands off, stuck the water hose in it, and <laughs> zip, zip tied it to his, his the hose and filled him up until he was about 10 feet wide and full of water. And if only they had cameras, or I had a camera back then when I did it, it would have been the most awesome thing ever. Oh they would have put God. you in a home. Huh? That's they would have put you in a home. Probably. Like disturbed like children. One of those uh, videos, a house explodes, and then no, yeah. it's just, it's just, it turns around. <laughs> All right. Well, Chad, welcome. Uh, and that's the craziest story I've heard. That's great. Fantastic. I was, I was a little imp. <laughs> oh impish. man! Well, we, we, we what I the word I used to describe Chad. Impish. He's okay. impish. He's impish. an uh, We're here to uh, review Moon of the Wolf, but before we get into all that, Jeff, you have some play now media information. Yeah, I do. Uh, Gruesome Magazine's Decades of Horror partners with Play Now Media on some of their streaming channels. Uh, we're on actually a bunch of them, but I kind of try to keep it simple. Uh, they got a whole bunch of free uh, sci-fi and horror channels from different eras. Uh, but Decades of Horror of the 1970s is on the Wicked Horror TV channel. And you can subscribe and not pay a fee. You will have to watch ads and like, you know, like on Tubi. And there is some premium content you will not have access to if you pay the monthly fee. Or I believe you can do it by a you know, reduced yearly rate as well. You can see everything with no ads. Excellent. And, and, and they got some new stuff coming that we're excited about. So uh, mm-hmm. it'll probably be a couple months down the road before we can announce it. But uh, I can't. I just can't keep my mouth shut. <laughs> and of course, some of you might be seeing this on the channel and already know what we're talking about. So thank you all very much. Uh, we are going to do what we're going to do tonight. Let's start that way is uh, we're going to share what we uh, first thought of this movie, Moon of the Wolf from 1972, and 
as it helped today and all that shenanigans. Then we'll get into a discussion about it. We'll talk about the plot, the actors, the director, the special effects, and other things. <laughs> and very, then we'll wrap very up. special effects. Very special. And then we'll wrap things up with some uh, feedback. Right, Jeff? Yes, we do have feedback. All right. Let's jump into the uh, CAD and all the shenanigans. But then we, we have no bananas, though. No bananas. Why would yes, we have, we have no bananas? What, 1980. Holy cow. Moon of the Wolf, 1970. Oh, I, yeah. Uh, <laughs> director Daniel Petrie, uh, written by 1972. Albert. Yes. 1972. These people 1972. were dead by 1980. Oh, stop. It's only eight years. Uh, writers Alvin Sappensley and uh, Les Witten uh, wrote the novel that uh, it was based on. The cast includes uh, David Jansen, Jansen, Barbara Rush, Bradford Dillman, John Berardino, Jeffrey Lewis, woot woot, Royal Dano, woot woot, Claudia McNeil. Uh, production company, Filmways, Television, Filming Locations, Louisiana, Clinton, and Burnside. Release date, September 22nd, 1972. It was the ABC movie of the week. It is also known as Jeff. Uh, I Well, I didn't look these up, but uh, <laughs> Le Norte de Lupo Monaro in Italy, Night of the Werewolf. Le Luc de la Nuit. <laughs> The Night Wolf, and I know I didn't, I just never do French, right? La we, Luna del Lobo, the Moon the Wolf. The Moon Wolf. I like the Moon Wolf. I like that. Mm. I like that. Time. The synopsis is, after several locals are viciously murdered, a Louisiana sheriff starts to suspect he may be dealing with a werewolf. Yeah. And I did want to mention, uh, the woman in the picture is uh, Claudia McNeil. She plays Sarah. Who works in the uh, the house with Jeffrey Lewis and his father, and uh, she doesn't have a lot of movie credits, but she was twice nominated for Tony Awards as Best Actress. Uh, first one in 1960 for A Raisin in the Sun, for which she re recreated her performance for the film version, which, by the way, was directed by Daniel Petrie, who directed this one. Uh, and again, in 1963 for the drama Tiger, Tiger, Burning Bright. So I just wanted to give her a shout out because uh, she doesn't have a lot of credits. We probably won't get to talk about her again. But I, she, she was, was a, awesome in this. She, she had a great movie. Very good. Very good. Very good, very good yeah. than she had to be. <laughs> that might be true. That might be true. <laughs> All right. Well, let's find out when we uh, first watched this film and what we thought of it. Does it hold today? Who, who chose this? Is it me? Chad. Chad. In that case, Chad, you're up first. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Uh, two werewolf movies in a row, one for classic air and one for one for 70s. Um, yeah, this showed up on um, Tubi. I saw it on Tubi and I said, hey, let's see what year it is. And sure enough, it was eligible. So picked it never seen it before uh but it looked very the cast i really like the cast uh david jansen uh jeffrey lewis uh royal dano um uh, the cast is amazing in this barbara rush uh i said can't be that bad if it's got all these great actors in it you know um so yeah i sat down and watched it i love werewolf movies where you they try to keep it a mystery who the werewolf is, mm. you know, silver bullet cycle, yeah. the werewolf, uh, the beast yeah. must die. I'll, I love those kind of werewolf movies. And uh, this is very much so. And, and it does a great job. The writing is very, very good. And um, does a great job of throwing some red fish in your way to kind of <laughs> make you think, <laughs> make you think that uh, red such, fish. such as the, yeah, the is fish. the werewolf. Uh, so, yeah, so by the end, it's easy to figure who the werewolf is, but, you know, uh, but it was uh, it was fun. It was fun trying to figure out right along with David Jansen who who the werewolf was. And uh, I love the performances. Uh, Brad Dillman uh, was great in it, as usual. I like him in almost everything he's in. Um, uh, Royal Dano, who you never, you know, 
he's always playing this type of role uh, in movies. Uh, but uh, I liked him a lot. It was just a great, great cast and a great story. And it's kind of hard to believe that it was a TV movie, uh, except for the werewolf. <laughs> mm. You know, the werewolf was kind of iffy, but but uh, I mean, it wasn't horrible. I didn't think, but um, it could have been better. But uh, yeah, I enjoyed this a lot. I had a lot of fun watching it, and a lot of ch fun trying to figure figure out who the who the monster was. So nice, nice, Bill Mulligan, sir. Uh, when did I, you first I, see this? I did not see this when it first came out. Um, I don't know why. Must maybe I had a date that night. <laughs> I'm kidding. Of course not. But I, for some reason, I wasn't there. Um, yeah, this was a surprise to me. This movie. I'll give this movie the compliment. This would have been a good movie if they ditched the whole werewolf thing. They they could, wow. have, they could have just been, you know, this was some good Southern Gothic, good cast, sharp writing, characters you actually cared about. And, um, okay, so the werewolf is a little on the piddly side. He's a lot of putty and, and, and hair. The things that give it away as a TV movie, besides the lack of widescreen, are the substandard werewolf and the the idea we have to buy into the idea that, oh my god must have been a monster these people were torn apart they weren't torn apart at all they barely looked dead i swear <laughs> the first corpse they find i thought she was just asleep or something but then later it's like oh i don't know this must have been a pack of dogs that we attacked her with an outboard motor and like wow you guys were seeing something i totally was not so okay there's that you can't expect to see super violence in a tv movie it's always going to fade to black and uh, he was certainly strong enough to tear people apart. He's ripping the, you know, jail cells limb from limb. And he had he had the, the chops. Um, but it was fun. I, I really, I enjoyed. I thought it was sharp writing, kind of adult writing. The fact that um, the heroine, the, the lady that we're sympathetic to, she's kind of a fallen woman sort of thing. You know, they didn't shy away. She was living in sin, which seems so innocent these days. But, you know, back then... What are they talking about, Mom and Dad? Shut up. Um, <laughs> I really enjoyed this. You know, you know, TV movies are such a roll of the dice. You, yeah. it, most of the time you end up with Snow Beast. But occasionally you get a nugget where the writers actually put in some effort. They got a good cast. There's always These things always have great cast because there were a lot of actors working in television at the time who would take a role. And if you gave them something decent to work with, you got something like this. This was a real surprise, and thank you, Chad, for picking it. Yeah. Now, they did. I just want to in interject that the guy that dies in the jail cell, who we'll, we'll reveal later, um, they do show his bloody corpse. He does have, like, his, his pants oh. are all torn, and there's blood all over it. But that's his the most you get. That's torn. the most you get. Yeah. <laughs> pants were torn. I see kids walking down the hallway with more holes in their pants than this guy had. But, hey, all right, we got a little bit there, and it's not that I wanted to see this, this pregnant woman rendered limb from limb, but it's just, yeah. But you kind of did. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was still... It was, <laughs> Go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> oh, I was still very sad and very uh, emotional, yeah. you know, the, the way they had her staged and the way people reacted to it was... Mm -hmm. Yeah, when her brother showed up. I mean, everyone was acting little hearts out, and I, I appreciate that. All Jeff. right. Your, your go. I, I too, I have not seen this. I think uh, 1972, I think that's uh, when I was using fake IDs to go to the bars every night. There you go. Um, <laughs> the uh, I thought Bill was laughing. He's just coughing. No, I was laughing and coughing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, but I enjoyed this. I, I was pleasantly surprised. Far, a far better movie than snow beast hmm. not even really comp you know would, wouldn't even want to compare them uh, again like everybody else love the cast i did not have a problem with the makeup because i just thought here's a choice it's a minimal choice yeah but uh you know a more a more man-like werewolf but i i was i was good with that um and i just all I can do is repeat stuff that everybody else said, but I love Barbara Rush is a great actress and she does a good job in this. Bradford Dillman, Royal Dano is great. Um, 
he's he's so good at playing that character it's almost it, it mm -hmm. appears effortless which which i assume just means he's a really good actor uh the uh i'm trying to think of who else oh well john berardino i don't think we have a slide on him but he was in uh dr hardy on general hospital yeah for years and years and years, mm -hmm. years he was the doctor right yeah yeah so i remember him he's from the doctor an, here yeah yeah an episode of uh George Reeves Superman. I remember him. Oh, okay. Well, and it, it very well could be, and, and the writing is great too, because it really is a whodunit. And as Chad said, there are some, some red fishies and um, there's also some stuff that happens that you go, wow, he's kind of an asshole. But then later you find out what the deal is. Uh, it's, so so it, it's, it's, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a good script. Oh, and it happens to be, I wanted to bring this up. Les Witten. Um, let's see if I can do this. Oh, wow. Stephen King had Moon of the Wolf and Progeny of the Adder listed in his list of horror movies you should, or horror books you should read in uh, the back of Dance Macabre. Hmm. And I found this, you know, it was one of those things where I read Dance Macabre in 1980. This was printed in 1992, so luckily I was working in the bookstore and saw it come over the shelves. But it's it's uh, yeah. For those listening, it's a paperback. So it is a paperback. It says uh, a nine dollar value for only four ninety nine. Two complete horror novels, leisure books. But it, it's not out there now, so I don't. Good luck finding it. I I found. But anyway, I'll, we'll pass on that. But. <laughs> Les Witten was an interesting guy, which I am going to bring up later. <laughs> okay. All right. Very good. Um, I I do remember watching this, um, I would, but I couldn't tell you details prior to watching it again. Although I did remember who the wolf was. So sadly, Chad, <laughs> I didn't have the same mystery to it because I knew who it was from the get-go. But, um, uh, but uh, yeah, I would have been all of seven, so... I can, I can, I guess everything who, who, yeah. Do you remember everything from when you were seven? I don't know. I, I, I no. but anyway, um, the, the cast is absolutely fantastic. Um, all of them. I mean, they're, yeah, I especially like Jeffrey Lewis in this. He's very young with, and his eyes are piercing blue in this. It's crazy. Um, and, and John Chandler is in this too. Who's, uh, plays, uh, <laughs> Dando Sunder, Tom senior and Tom junior. As characters, and uh, he's he he's um, an interesting character actor as well, uh, especially in some westerns of the seventies. We'll get to him, uh, but anyway, the cat I, I fully bought in everything. I like uh, I think was it Jeff or Bill said that this would this just made a good gothic mystery. Whether well, it was, Bill said uh, that, but I, I yeah totally agree. Yeah, yeah, whether it was a. Uh, a, a wolf, supernatural or just a killer it would have been just as interesting because the characters outshined everything and uh, the, the actors playing them as well i i enjoyed watching this again um i will say i did not watch the tubi cut i found it to be a little too grainy mm -hmm. or at least the one that came up when i searched for and i found a much clearer copy on youtube i think that's oh, the one i watched it's in public domain so i i ended up watching that after about 20 minutes of trying to watch the other one where I couldn't even see faces. And I was like, ah. Oh, really? I watched it. Yeah. Before. So, it, um, but it, it looked great there. Of course, it's the TV, you know, format. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, but it, yeah, the werewolf isn't all that great, but I remember it. I do remember it coming through like the door and, and being at the window at that mm -hmm. one time and and being like it was a scary werewolf at seven regardless of how i think about it looking today um so i i, I this was a joy to watch again i hadn't seen it since and it was fun to, to revisit it and stir up those memories so yeah. fun stuff indeed indeed um this is a tv movie do we have taglines oh well as a matter of fact we do, so I want to make sure that uh, we welcome everybody to Chad's place. There you go. <laughs> no, For taglines with Chad. 
I suggest going next door to the drugs and alcohol yeah. <laughs> store before you come to Chad's place. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Taglines for Moon of the Wolf. Deadly secrets emerge from the shadows when the full moon rises. Okay. That's True. not too bad. From a dying old crazy man comes a warning. Loop guru or werewolf for the layman. Yeah. Ah, ah. <laughs> a killer force not of this world sweeps shock and terror through a steaming Louisiana bayou. Steaming. Steaming bayou. Steaming pile of Louisiana bayou. Yep. Jambala. <laughs> you guys are gonna get some letters. You guys are gonna get letters. You gotta get letters. Is that it? Is that it? <laughs> that's it. Was was that the last one? That was it. Uh, uh, and that's been. And by the way, if you do go to Chad's place, don't go down the alley. Whatever you do. Mm. Uh, and that's been taglines with Chad. Chad's a hero, cool and rad. With him reading taglines, they can't be that bad. Cool and rad. That should be our T-shirt. I love that. Ching, ching, yeah. Cool and rad. Ching. <laughs> All right. Well, let's well, uh, go ahead. Somebody said somebody spoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to. I, I just want to get this out of the way because, uh -oh. uh, and then we can get into the posters. But Les Wetton was an American investigative reporter at the Washington merry-go-round under Jack Anderson. Wow. Which wasn't always well thought of by other reporters it was considered sort of a uh i don't know raunchy I don't it know. was a rag it was a yeah. rag <laughs> sensationalistic, sensationalistic. It however, the kind of place you would hire carl kolchak uh he also worked for yeah he also worked for washington post and hearst newspapers uh joined the washington mary go around under jack anderson uh, following the death of Anderson's business partner uh, and founder, Drew Pearson. Uh, staff included folks like Britt Hume, Fox News anchor, uh, et cetera. So there was someplace on here. Uh, it's coverage. Some of the coverage that he did included the CIA plot to assassinate Fidel Castro and Nixon's secret foreign policy shift to Pakistan from India. Uh, special assignments included investigating the private lives of FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover, what, bro? And top aide Clyde Tolson. That's probably mm -hmm. where the the surly part comes. Um, I bet he was on a couple of enemies lists. Uh, probably claimed uh, Mark Feldstein, who was deep throat, deep throat, claimed that Witten was known to have threatened at least one of his sources by saying, "If you don't give this to me, I'll say it came from you." But if wow. you give it to me, we'll have lunch, and I'll say it came from a source near the White House. Um, he did something. What was the thing here? Nixon administration had the CIA trail Witten and Jack Anderson, G. Gordon Liddy and E. Howard Hunt, plotted to assassinate Anderson by using LSD, described by Liddy as aspirin roulette. <laughs> uh, so he didn't like the stuff he was writing. So anyway. Um, it's the 70s, man. And then there was uh, uh, FBI agents arrested Witten and Hank Adams as they helped load stolen government documents into his car in 1973 uh, that were taken from the Bureau of Indian Affairs by Native American activists from the Trail of Broken Treaties protest. Uh, Witten faced indictment in a First Amendment uh, case and 10 years in jail of... Uh, People wore free Les Witten buttons, et cetera. Herb Block drew a political cartoon about him. Uh, so anyway, he was he was a uh, figure <laughs> back then in the uh, yeah. sort of the news media underground. And in his spare time, he wrote he about wrote, wrote about a dozen novels, political thrillers, horror, and science fiction, and translated the poetry of Baudelaire from French into English. <laughs> Sounds like a Renaissance. Movie. I just love, I just love kind of explains like some of the Louisiana stuff here. Yeah. So anyway, so I'm, I'm done. I just wanted this, you know, this guy had an interesting out, life. I thought, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, of course this movie is a TV movie of the week. So uh, you would think of, there's no posters, but right. you might. 
but most of them come from well the the dozens of probably uh uh what uh, public domain dvds Fly by night public yeah. domain releases yeah yeah here's a couple of them here that's what he's like yeah because he almost does a here's johnny thing coming yeah. through the door i mean yeah, that, yeah. i remember that i remember that when i saw it first time. grindhouse double feature i wonder is that a uh honey moon of dvd Horror. or something yeah yeah it has to be it has Probably to be dvd yeah uh then we have uh these two um <laughs> yeah. I like the one on the bottom where they've just taken a long <laughs> shot with Long Cheney. I'm pretty yeah. sure they did. They Long just grabbed tin, tin, tin and a wolf, and you just slap them together in Photoshop and instant poster. Yeah, not even worth legal litigation. That's so tiny. So <laughs> <laughs> better to ignore it. But yeah, that's like from one of the later werewolf films, isn't it? Yeah, yeah man, that's uh, that's there's sad. Not a, there's oh gee. That one, one at the top is a Pixar production of. Uh, <laughs> Stop! You're killing me. Oh yeah, it does look like a Muppet. Like what are you waiting no, for? No, what, what I don't like about this werewolf, and that one just totally accentuates it. Just big hunking clown nose. Yeah, it is a hunk clown nose, <laughs> and he didn't have that. No, mm -mm. no. I mean, and he didn't look like the thing in the bottom either from the profile. <laughs> no, I mean he look, he looked like. Oh, Look like that down there at the bottom. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's hard to see, but basically, he just had hairy, you know, hairy yeah. wrist and hair around his chin. You know, werewolf. He's, he's so a, hard to pull off. He's a they step really up are. from the Kolchak werewolf. Oh hell he yeah! Yes, yes. indeed. Yes, indeed. I I mean I I was fine with the werewolf in the movie, but the, it's funny that out of all these posters, it really wasn't a good one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, in, in context, it served it served the piece. It did fine. Mm. Um, it was relatively uh, intimidating enough, or at least the actors sold it that it was. Yeah. I guess it's yeah. probably a better way to do it. Like when he, you know, uh, goes back to the mansion and is chasing Barbara Rush, you you believe that she's scared of it. Mm -hmm. So that helps a lot to right. do that. Oh, so, yeah, that's why I say she is really good because she's she's kind of this. Uh, well, I don't know, sort of. Flirty, comical Southern Belle, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then, but it's and she goes against the grain because she has no problem going in and having coffee with uh, David Jansen in the pool hall, this dark, dingy bar, which her family would never be caught dead in, apparently, according to Bradford Dillman, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then when the werewolf comes in she get uh, the emotions really do come out and she's yep. yep. and then this is uh oh, I, I love this i love this this is from the tv guide poster the i guess uh, one of the rails as you were yeah. going through the mm -hmm. tv i uh, yeah i'm finding out that more and more people did what i did and cut all these things out and put them into a scrap yeah don't you, don't you love how they called tv movies world premieres like that was something special like yeah well, I mean, technically it was, yeah, right? It kind of was yeah. then, because you so only was, had three channels back then. Yeah, but so was every episode of the Montefuscos, and they didn't brag about that. I mean, every everything on TV is a world premiere if you don't see it in the summer. Hey, yeah. I have a question for you guys. Do you remember the first time you heard the term loop guru? Yes, Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo! I think yeah. you're right. The first I don't time remember. I heard I it was remember. Johnny Quest. Nah. Oh, oh, that may have been it too. There's a yeah. Johnny Quest episode in there <laughs> that one season they did in when was that 63, 64, uh, with French fur crabbers. And I didn't realize this because I was looking for that episode. Did you know Tim Matheson did the voice of Johnny Quest? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. that show. Oh my god, that's great. I didn't realize that either. Johnny Quest, you, you look at the, those episodes of Johnny Quest, and like people die on that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. A, it was a great <laughs> show. It was a wasn't that on uh, for my market anyway? I think that was on around six thirty or something like that hmm. on a, on a weekday weeknight. I don't remember. I hmm. thought it was Saturday, but I could be wrong. I remember watching it on Saturday. No, but, they, but maybe that when it, when it went into syndication, they were showing it. As well in the afternoons, mm -hmm. but what a great show! 
Yeah. Well, here we have our, our star of the movie, uh, Dr. Richard Kimball. <laughs> David Danson from The Fugitive uh, is probably He what. grew his arm back. He did. Well, no, it wasn't him. He was searching for the one arm man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100, 120 episodes. Um, also in the Green Berets. But uh, yep, he yep. is he, he's really good. He, along with Barbara Rush, I think really holds this film together. Of course, we follow him. He's our lead. And he, we're, he, you know, he's going through every suspect yeah um and uh, comes to a a very uh I, I don't know satisfying conclusion i mean he comes to realize who it is i mean almost in time <laughs> almost in time not quite he's a likable character he's clearly he and the doctor are clearly the smartest people in this town which is a low bar but okay and and so of course they'd be friends and um well, from what the doctor was doing he wasn't that smart no, no, no. Oh, no. well, yeah. Yeah, he had medicine smarts, but not uh, common sense. When he said, yeah. I'm almost 50 years old, I was like, dude. 50 years old? I can't almost start 50. over. I'm like, drop dead. You look like you hit 50 20 years ago. Sorry. Right. Oh, my gosh. I was like, <laughs> oh, no, what am I going to do with an MD? I'm going to start all over again. I'm like, oh, shut up. Oh, I, I did yeah. find one. Uh, uh, genre he, movie he was in francis in the haunted house who's that who, who are we talking about francis in the haunted house uh david jansen david jansen man uh, i love it so if people don't know folks out there might not be familiar francis was a long-running series about a talking freaking mule yeah yes. that's right a mule that could talk before mr ed there was francis and he like won world war ii single-handedly well single hoofedly and uh they were great. I don't know. Well, he was, they smeared peanut butter on a mule's mouth and made it look like he was talking. Well, Francis it's weird. Talking. The year before that, he was in Francis in the Navy, and he was a different character. This is 55. Nobody 50. was paying attention to anyone except Well, Francis. and the voice, if I remember right, the voice was Chill Wells, and that was the, the that mule was a cut up. He was hilarious. You know, it was... I love those old crappy formulaic black and white movies from that time. They, I grew up with them, and West I love Point. them. He was in that one, too. Wow, he was... He was like in a bunch of them, and he played a different character every time. But with well, the same problem, which is that Francis would only talk to him, and then he would tell people that Francis was talking, and they'd have him fit for a rubber room, because obviously a mule <laughs> can't talk. And yeah, we build funny. up until the moment when finally Francis spills the beans, and everybody realizes that he can talk, and yeah. Those did, you, so cool. did you watch uh, Harry O that he starred in shortly after this for yes. three yeah. years? Yeah. yeah, 45 episodes. Now he died relatively young, didn't he? I think so, but I'm not. He was almost fifty. <laughs> yeah, forty-nine. Yeah, <laughs> forty-eight yeah. actually. Yeah, um, yeah the other guy, the other guy, Chad. Just so you know, he would have been, he would have been fifty and sixty-seven. So he was fifty-five. <laughs> he wasn't that much older than fifty. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we'll get to that in a little bit. Oh my gosh, this is right. Making me feel over the hill here. I, I remember him. I think he hit it the big time when he starred in The Fugitive. Though. Yeah, right. He yeah. That was his big. Yeah. That was his big deal. I that never got to watch so that. My dad didn't like it. He no, didn't, no. I don't think he, he didn't like David Jansen for some reason. I have hmm. no idea why. But. When you think of all the TV shows that were basically used The Fugitive as a template, Incredible Hulk, I'm looking right at you. Yeah. I mean, that, that was one of the most influential TV shows ever. That was. That was a common... You know, it was part of the zeitgeist, you know, the hunting for the man with one arm. Yeah. It's surprising that um, our, our leads here, you can you kind of see three of them here. You see David uh, Jensen, you see Barbara Rush, you see Bradford Dillman. They're all relatively the same age. A yeah. few years Walmart. apart. At most. Well, I think yeah. Barbara came out on the good end of that stick. Yeah, she's got some good genes there. <laughs> Yeah, and she's she's yeah. Well, we won't talk about a girl's age, but <laughs> she did look great for her age. That's for sure. No, you know, I like that. I like that they didn't just go with you know the usual thing that they would do now, where everyone is as young as they can possibly. You know, they just made a new Alien movie. Yeah. Everyone looks like they're twenty. Mm -hmm. Based right. commercial actors. Yeah, uh, but I mean, I liked the dialogue where they talk about being in school and mm -hmm. you know that they were a year apart or. Maybe a couple years, right? And, uh, right. 
I, I, it, it really, I, the characters were really well fleshed out right. in a variety of different ways. I really like that. And you yeah, bought he's, it. He's, go ahead, Chad. I said you, you bought it. You, right. You, the, the chemistry between those two was mm -hmm. great. Um, like Doc said earlier, she just went right in and had a cup of coffee with him at the, at the Chad's place there or whatever that was. And, uh, <laughs> you know, she didn't care, but she already alluded to the fact that she sort of uh, went against the grain as far as right. what her family mm -hmm. wanted. So it, something like that wouldn't bother her, I guess, going in to do that. But it, it, you, you really got the feeling that these two really cared about each other and, and uh, had this pass together, or he used to have a crush on her. Yeah, because David Jansen is up until the point when he sees her, he's really this kind of gruff, no nonsense Southern sheriff mm -hmm. that doesn't say much. And then when he sees her, he kind of gets this grin oh, on his face. And becomes, <laughs> yeah, becomes this <laughs> kind of with a crush, you know. But it's effective. It's very effective. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, Anyway, so well, let's move on to Barbara Rush, and uh, there's a a few a few, uh, a few oh, genre is. roles in the past. Uh, yeah, I I had forgotten she was she was so gorgeous back then too. I mean, she's a good looking woman in this film, but when she was in They Came from Outer Space and when Worlds Collide, she mm -hmm. was just scrumptious. Yeah, we uh, did. They came from outer space. I don't know. Was that a year or so ago, Chad? Or yeah. Two years, but and that's the picture of her down to bottom left. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Looking more. through the alien eye. Yeah. I wish I could have seen that in 3D. Mm. Doc. Doc has it. I have it in 3D. Really? Yes. Yeah. May have to break into your house one day. Nah, you don't have to break in. You're invited. <laughs> oh, she was in Robin in the Seven Hoods. She played Marion. Oh, that's another one of those stupid 60 movies I like. Yeah. In the 60s, uh, well, I, another one of my pack. faves. Again, this is a uh, well, yeah. there's no bikinis in it. Ah, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> there was, uh, uh, it's another one of those ones that I like, and probably maybe because it's a western, but uh, Ombre, she was great in that. She's uh, like the banker's wife, or she's somebody's wife that's all dressed up on the stagecoach. And uh, Richard Boone somehow gets a hold of her, and she just looks, she's just covered with dust and looks, it's like with Paul Newman. Have you guys ever seen that? You, you should watch it. I've heard really, of it, but I don't think I've ever seen it. What was really the name of the movie again, Jeff? Um, Ombre. Ombre. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I've seen it, but I couldn't tell you anything about it. Yeah. it was, my dad was a huge Western fan, so we, I consumed a lot of weird Westerns when I was young. And... Batman. Batman. What did she play in Batman? Nora Clavicle. <laughs> Clavicle? Well, I think she was in the two episodes she was in. One was a Louis the Lilac. Ah, uh, uh, Louis the Lilac. That was a dumb villain. Milton yeah. Pearl. <laughs> and then the following episode was Nora Clavicle and the Ladies' Crime Club, where they somehow or another managed to replace the entire city government police force with women. Hmm. Uh, I don't know, I, but yeah. Season three, season three. Yeah, it movie, sounds movie. like season yeah. three. Mm. But she was yeah. there. She was. And there. She was in seventy-five episodes of Peyton Place. I guess a lot of people back in the day would remember her from that. I suppose yeah. that was from uh, that pretty. Was that pretty popular? Or did, am I making? Yeah, it was pretty popular. No, yeah, it, it was. was. It was okay. like uh, prime the first primetime soap opera. I think it was on multiple days a week. Yeah, because yeah, mm. it's only it's only got one or two years on there. It's sixty eight right. to sixty nine. So I think it was on. I want to say it was on three days a week or two days a week. Um, she was uh, she was in an episode of Night Gallery. Cool air. <laughs> cool air. She was quite good. In this. She was extraordinary. That's it, it, it. Again. And there's more cast members that are, we're going to say this about is yes. that they make this movie work. They yeah, really yeah. do. I mean, well, well, the direction's fine and some of the other stuff's fine. I think we skipped the director. We'll turn around and get to him here in a second. But uh, yeah, I mean, it really is. It's it's a somebody. You, Bill, you called it a gothic drama, and that's gothic mystery, and that's really where it shines. Mm -hmm. well, this yeah, this cast made the movie. I thought. 
I mean, every, there wasn't a stinker in the bunch, I don't think. Um, well, it I'll showed kind of... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, it showed kind of the class system of the, the yep. deep south, yeah. where you had the people living down in the holler that didn't even have a telephone, and, you know, he didn't want those people get their fat, grubby fingers on his sister, and mm -hmm. and then there was the, the Jeffrey Rush people, and then there was the the next one. Jeffrey Lewis. Jeffrey Dillon. Lewis. Jeffrey Not Lewis, Jeff. I'm sorry. Jeffrey I, Rush. I did pirate. that before. <laughs> Jeffrey <laughs> Lewis. Speaking of which, everybody Jeffrey heard about this already in, in 80s Death Ship, but because of 80s Death Ship with George Kennedy and Jeffrey Lewis, I went and watched Thunderbolt and Lightfoot. Oh, uh, wow. Which came out in 74. They are, they are awesome. And Jeffrey Lewis doesn't say a whole lot except, what do we do now, Red? To... Uh, <laughs> George Kennedy, but anyway, uh, all right. He said he is so good, and he started showing up in all these Clint Eastwood uh, uh, westerns uh, from High Plains Drifter, and uh, I don't, I don't know what all else. I remember seeing him in well, some of he those. He was in the Every Which Way But Loose. Yeah, movie. yeah, that's yeah. where I remember him from. Is those two movies? Because he was the, wasn't he the best friend? Yeah, he was the best friend. Right, mm -hmm. right, yeah. And that's where I remember him most. That that's where I remember. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Everybody does terrifying oh yeah. sorry salem's lot uh, picture at the bottom there that's oh my god that's when he's sitting in that chair and his eyes are glowing oh my gosh so he's he's obviously the first suspect of being a werewolf because when he shows up he looks like he's transforming into a werewolf he, he's, well he's, he's, yeah he's he's, <laughs> he's got a temper he's yeah. left-handed and they think he's left -handed. some know? of these people uh barbara rush just died less than six months ago Oh. At the age of 97. Wow, that's a good run. Mm. Jeffrey Lewis, man. I love I love anything he's in. Yeah. yeah. Juliet Lewis's father, if you didn't yeah. know. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah I, I, he's he he I don't he never got a good shake at being a, a lead anywhere, but he's fantastic as a character actor and a supporting yeah. actor. Devil's, just, Devil's rejects. Yeah. 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 You know, there's something to be said. If I mean, I guess if you had a choice, you'd want to be a superstar. But superstars, they have a shelf life. And and once, except for the lucky ones that can make it ride forever, like a Clint Eastwood, most of them, there comes a point where you're not the lead actor anymore. You're not getting those phone calls. And they don't even think to call you for a character role because you'd be distracting people. So there's a lot to be said for being a successful working character actor, you know? You can put on a little weight. You can be in some movies that might otherwise be stinkers. Nobody blames you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Night of the Comet is another one he was in mm -hmm. the 80s. The Bronco Billy with Clint Eastwood. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah, Bronco Billy. Oh, how did and you bring climbing, that up? <laughs> they're climbing in that window and the camera's like closed in on Jeffrey Jeffrey's butt as they're climbing through the window and he farts as he's going through the window. My you, I died laughing at you that. You remember strange things, Chad. I do yeah. because <laughs> funny. I don't care who you are. That's right. Oh my god. I haven't thought about that movie in a long time. I love Bronco Billy. <laughs> Bronco Billy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, god, but he's bottom. Oh my god. It's even giving me that's, the, the I know that's just that terrifying. Right, let's move on to Bradford Tillman. Who well, we've talked oh, there's a good picture of the wolf there. And that actually, I mean, other than looking a little plastic. Kind of a brown noser. Yeah. Looks looks not too I mean it's 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 calling it serviceable wrong. I mean it's it, serviceable. You know what I noticed when I was a kid? If you had fake fangs, if you put them like where the fangs are pointing down, you're a vampire. But if you stick them on your bottom teeth so the fangs are sticking up, you're a werewolf. You're a werewolf. Yeah, absolutely. That's the rule. Those are the that rules, is, right? That there. is the rule. <laughs> they also um, did another universal trope with with this werewolf, where, uh, and I, it's usually the wolf man that sees his next victim with the pentagram. Ah, uh, right. right. But the old man was sick. He kept pointing to Jeffrey. Jeffrey Rush, Jeffrey Rush, Jeffrey Lewis's hand, and then uh, mm -hmm. uh, he, the girl's hand, Barbara Rush's hand too. Mm -hmm. so yeah, that was, was the last time. Last time we saw him, he was like all upset about it. When yeah, 
Yeah. So the whole reason he was so upset and everything is he knew what was going on. He just couldn't articulate it to everybody. Well, he was a crazy dying man. Who's going to listen to him? And he had a dialect. <laughs> yeah. we, we've done a bunch of Bradford Dillman movies, I think. Mm -hmm. few, anyway. to come. Yeah. He's a good looking guy. And, you know, considering he was playing the upper class twit, he wasn't as unlikable as those roles usually are. Yeah. No, actually, he he. The, the, okay, so there's a couple interesting things that happened with him. But, you know, he, uh, you know, he does participate in town things, right? And he he mm -hmm. he was also participating in the town meetings. We don't get to see that, but there's a conversation about it. But he he also there's a scene where he goes with David Jensen, the the sheriff, to a part of town. He goes, you know, that he had never been to, and he, and this is an island, right? It's Marsh Island, right, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he had never been to that section. I just I found that fascinating. I don't know why, but it was fascinating. So I think this well, is the fourth movie we've done of his. Huh. Chosen oh. Survivors, um, Piranha, huh. Bug. and Bug. Bug. Bug, of course. He's great in Bug. Oh, my gosh. And we're definitely going to be doing, at some point in the future, Escape from the Planet of the Apes, which he's in. Um, the reason that he was a jerk in the movie at, at the, some points, he had a reason for it. As he was trying to cover up the fact that he had this illness or this this condition mm -hmm. like can't like and mm -hmm. didn't want you know he didn't want his sister telling he didn't he was embarrassed because of his sister's situation because she was living with some dude in new york and so it kind of gave you a reason why he just wasn't a jerk right. for being a jerk's sake he, he sort of had yeah. good good reason why so he was the character was still pretty good and fleshed out even though he was the monster a lot of projection there, though. You know, you're upset because your sister's living with some guy. Meanwhile, you tear people limb from limb when yeah. there's a full moon outside. I mean, come on. These are not equitable. <laughs> but okay. yeah, well, it, does, it still leaves us, even though we've done four of them, still leaves us plenty yeah. more to uh, tackle in the future. Uh, a couple TV shows, uh, a couple other horror films. I, are you guys familiar with uh, the Mephisto Waltz? Yes. yes, Alan Alda. Yep. Yeah, yeah. A dog with a human. A head. dog with that. Rah, 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 rah. Yeah, that's what I remember from it. <laughs> the piano, something about a piano. Oh my gosh, he was I in the. Remember being a long drag, but I, yeah, yeah, that yeah, might be yeah, true yeah. too. I might have to watch um, it again. Long way to go for the dog with the human head. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've we've talked about him a lot. Let's. Um, we we don't have a picture of. Um, John, what's it? How Baradino? Baradino. Baradino. That's the guy I was telling you that you were saying he looks fifty. No, he's he was actually fifty five <laughs> or fifty four when they filmed it, probably. Um, yeah. So one of the things I liked about his character was at the beginning uh, when they they call him out to look at the body. David Jansen asks him, "Well, what do you think?" And and his response is only that it's not considered good medical practice to perform autopsies in the middle of the swamp, surrounded by howling dogs and scratching rustics. <laughs> the rustics! Yeah. Right I want the remains moved to the hospital as soon as you can arrange it. Do you think that could be accomplished by the neighborhood clods without mm -hmm. completely <laughs> obliterating any chance there might and be? He's right there in front yeah, of Yeah, they're right there. Yeah, they're right there. But you find out later, it's because he was... Yeah, having an affair with her. He was in love right. with this girl and had to pretend he didn't know her and was so that I, at first I thought, man, what an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> but then later you kind of go, oh, I kind of see he was he's still an asshole. He was broke those, up. He is so rednecks, <laughs> those rednecks are thinking, when I get home and look up the word rustic, you're gonna be in trouble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he does have he does have a fun scene though with the werewolf when he's escapes from the hospital. When, he, when the werewolf jumps yeah. in the window. Oh, yeah. And, I'm um, going to hit you. <laughs> yeah. Even though I saw you bust open doors. and uh, It's a little inconsistent. Yeah, this thing can, can tear, you know, metal hinges off and, and break a jail cell open. But a bunch of nurses and a, a, a doctor who's got to be pushing 50 or something. The guy looks old as dirt. Um, it's almost 50. Yeah. They're holding their own against <laughs> He was, he was scared. He was confused. 
but he he was on three thousand over three thousand episodes of General Hospital as Doctor Steve wow. Hardy. I imagine yeah. a lot of people remember him. That's on where that I show. remember him from. He was a baseball player too. Yeah, was he? Oh yeah. wow, I did not know that. I watched General Hospital during the Luke and Laura era. Yeah, <laughs> we all had sisters who made us watch it. And, and you said, Chad, you remembered him from an Adventures of Superman. Yeah, episode? yeah, it was. He played like a. He was trying to reform or something, and. Uh, I can't remember the name of the episode. The Lucky. No, he Lucky played guy. a character, Dexter Brown. Oh, he was on the Cisco Kid. Cisco. <laughs> oh, Cisco. Oh, Cisco. <laughs> oh, Ponto. Yes, I had. I watched that. It was on reruns, but I watched it because I was. I don't know why they. What? What? Was, <laughs> growing up, all the '50s shows like the the Adventures of Superman and Cisco Kid, they would play like it. Right before going off to school, do you remember that? Yeah. Like before you get on the bus, you'd and you're always and late it. for the bus because you just had to see what you had to watch the end. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Lone Ranger as well, which you was on. All those. Oh, yeah. What was going on? Man, I, I I could eat those shows alive. I just watched them yeah. over and over again. Red well, they Rider, did. Is. Little Beaver. With with the Lone Ranger though, there was a ton of episodes. Some of those movies, like Johnny Quest, you go back and look, and there's like. Nothing. There's there's only like 25 or 27 episodes or something like That's that. Right. And I'm going, but they were on perpetually. Uh, I must have just watched them over and over and over That's again. Right. That's um, that watch that over and over again. Gilligan's Island over and over again. Um, we didn't have VCRs, so you know, uh, yeah, you're watching them over and over, but they're spread out. So Saturday afternoon is when I watched uh, Lone Ranger was on, and there was a show called Sky King. Did you guys ever yep. see that? Well, I I Oh man! With his with his daughter Penny, <laughs> it was just <Okay>. weird. <laughs> there was a show that used to come on, and it was called "Remember the Years," and they played it. Come on late at night after the evening news after eleven thirty, and they played all the old uh, serials. So oh, you got, okay. you got oh, to see wow. King of the oh. Rocket Men and and uh, Captain Marvel, nice uh, Captain America, and all those old serials and and um uh, used to love that yeah. and anyway, i was watching gilligan's island and the, yeah. <laughs> the monsters well, also, adam's family i dream of genie yeah. we wish he was also God. he was also in two episodes of the texan starring rory calhoun <laughs> everybody oh. now rory calhoun all right <laughs> Lots of shows that I watched though at the time. Have Gun Will Travel, Sea Hunt. Do you guys watch Sea Hunt? Yes. Yeah. Uh Broken right. Arrow. This time my lungs were aching for air. <laughs> <laughs> How'd we get on uh, that? I don't know, but we're just revisiting our childhood all of that. Remember yeah. that movie we were talking about? <laughs> no, it was a Remember, Mary, Royal. Remember Oh my gosh. Royal. He's absolutely fantastic in this. We talked a bunch about him with in uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Yeah. No, I bet. <laughs> Same character in every movie. Yeah. He, Outlaw he Josie so Wales. Well. I mean, geez. I think he had the same hat in every movie. Yeah, looks like it. Same overalls, same shirt. Yeah. <laughs> that, that twang. Never washed. Boy, they used him in a lot of stuff. He was in... Uh, he did a couple episodes of... Well, he was in Dark Half. The Dark Half, mm -hmm. a couple episodes of Twin Peaks, Space Invaders, Killer Clowns, Ghoulies 2, House 2, the second story. <laughs> Did he play the gun, the, the gunslinger? That was no. John Aston, I think. Okay, okay, John okay. Aston. Yeah, but, there was, but there, was a, there was a oh, dead gunslinger weird. after yeah. John Aston, right? Never mind, never mind. Go on. <laughs> Something wicked this way comes, and I that's one I haven't looked recently, but that's one I've been looking for for 80s to do. But it's never it doesn't get, yeah, yeah. It's, it's in the same vault with Excalibur, it's very irritating. I'm surprised mm. it's not on Disney Plus, isn't it? A uh, Disney right, film? right. Uh, I believe it is. I've never seen it. Oh, I went to the I saw it in the theater, yeah. and I was a big fan of Bradbury, and I read the book, amazing. so I was like super excited about that. I was not allowed mm -hmm. to watch it. I was sneaking out of the house watching Exorcist and 
wicked. It's and wicked. all this kind of stuff. But my mom said, nope, you're not going to see that. It's something wicked this way comes. Well, that wasn't, it was an 80s flick. Uh, mm -hmm. Was it? 1983. Yeah. yeah, that been around the time I was trying yeah, to see still it. Not, not available for streaming. But he's in like every Western TV show you could think of. Yeah, yeah. But, but how did he, what, what brought him to fame? Was it a certain role or just ever just being seen over and over and over again? Or was there... he was at, he was everywhere. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay, we talk about this all the time, but he's in 13 episodes of Gunsmoke in 12 years. So <laughs> playing different characters. If all you did, yeah, play a different character. So if all you did was like Gunsmoke, you'd have seen him 13 times. Mm -hmm. Um five episodes of Death Valley Days, uh four episodes of the Big Valley. He was in a lot of horror films in the eighties. Mm. Yeah, I'm just trying to, you know, I keep thinking like five episodes of the Virginian. I think I knew about him from westerns up through that time period because that's right. like I've always said. My dad watched a bunch of them. I didn't. I don't know that I knew his name. It just you just recognize him. And uh... sorry, Doc, what were you gonna say? No, no, you you answered my question. You answered my question. Oh. Absolutely. Well, that's where I knew him. I don't know about you guys. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, but the character actor that plays his son, um, I want to talk about him for a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John John Chandler, so sometimes called John Davis Chandler, um, who also had these blue eyes, the crazy blue eyes. Um, but he, he, he as soon as I saw him, I immediately recognized him as an actor that I'd seen over and over again. Like, like, where did I see him? Where did I see him? Um. And it's like Aloe Josie Wells, I guess, because he's the he's the first bounding on her, right? I mean, Maybe. Royal Tano, I mean, there all these guys are in Aloe Josie Wells. Well, that might be true. Uh, but but that, I, I, that could I be. I, I was thinking. I'm trying to scroll down because I I was thinking maybe he was in uh, a particular. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not down there yet. <laughs> yeah, keep talking. Don't make me. <laughs> I I just. I was thinking I, he was in Star Trek, but he's not. He's not. But I recognized was, his face Deep as Space soon as Nine. I saw him. Yeah. He was in Star Trek: Deep Space Nine. Yeah, I see that. I see that. I was thinking he was one of the Yerps in the uh, original Star Trek episode. But... What did you call him? Yerp. <laughs> one of the Yerps. Yerps. <laughs> Are you one of the Yerps? Excuse me, the sword and the sorcerer. <laughs> the sword and the sorcerer. Oh no! Uh, did we did we talk about the the director? Uh, did, uh, yeah, nope. I mean, we kind of talked about the couple TV shows or TV movies that he directed, right? Well, that he directed a Raisin uh, in the Sun, and that was that was not a TV movie. That was a theatrical movie. Oh, he did the theatrical. I thought for some reason I was thinking it was. Uh, I thought uh, you mentioned did, an, an, uh, an Emmy, so I thought that's what you did. Well, the other one that I I saw is uh, my name is Bill W, which was a, the story of Bill Wilson and Alcoholics Anonymous, where James Woods played Bill Wilson and uh, James Garner plays Doctor Bob. That was a TV movie. Wow, he did Fort Apache, the Bronx, the Bronx. Mm. Yes, yes. Wow. Oh, he's a decent, he, decent director, I think. You he know. directed Sybil, the, the TV miniseries. Oh, okay. The Cocoon, or Cocoon, The Return. He the did the Neptune sequel, yeah. The sequel. Factor. The Neptune Factor. The sequel, the one you never can find anywhere. Can you? Well, Cocoon, you can't find anywhere either. Yeah. Oh, Six really? Pack, that uh, amazing Kenny Rogers uh, vehicle. Oh, my God, it is. <laughs> oh, my God. Did I watch that movie way too many times for some stupid reason? It's not a good movie. <laughs> I, it over I did again. not like Kenny Rogers. I was. Oh my gosh. Uh... <coughs> yeah, he didn't do a whole lot of. Well, he did Neptune Factor. I saw that in the theater. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Uh, Ernest Borgnine, Walter Pigeon, Ben Uh Yeah, because the, the poster on that had this big fish. 
like going after the submarine. So you thought you were going to get all these giants, but you really didn't. Look like an aquarium tank fish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that was a uh, that was a challenge <laughs> through with my mom in the theater. <laughs> my mom would take me to the movies, and she was not not having it. She didn't like that movie. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Daniel. <laughs> but I, I, yeah. well, I guess, the point I guess I was leading to before I got distracted by that is I thought he handled the this the the, the, the supernatural air quotes of aspect of this story fairly well. I mean the, the being on the Louisiana Bayou helped it kind of, you know, with yeah. the old right the old, right. the old houses and stuff, gave it the uh, you know, gave the atmosphere he needed, so but he handled it. What he did was handled the, and we've said it over and over again. But he handled the, uh, the actor so so wonderfully well. Uh, said he won three primetime Emmys uh, for. And where are the Emmys? They're all the way down the west. <laughs> where are they? Uh, Mark Twain and Me, outstanding children's program in 1992, and. Uh, he was nominated for My Name is Bill W. He was a winner in 1977 for Eleanor and Franklin, The White House Years. Yes. And a winner in 1976, and also Eleanor and Franklin, I suppose, the prequel to The White House Years. <laughs> anyway. it, yeah, yeah. It was a, yep, looks that way. So, yeah, he's got he, a he didn't of, He didn't win anything for Sybil? Because I remember, wasn't Sybil like a big deal? Yeah, it yeah. was. It was. Okay. I don't know. I didn't look at all the other ones. I mean, they've got Cable Ace Awards on here. Um, Fantastic Film Festival for a movie called Resurrection. I remember that. Um, and both yeah, the I actors were too. nominated for okay. Oscars, I believe. Uh, very, very fascinating. It's all over the place doing lots of different yeah, types yeah, of yeah. Types of content, that types of uh, genres and stuff. A lot of TV, a lot of TV, but I, but again, not all TV because there's a lot of movies in here too. But I, th I thought he was fantastic. I thought he did a great job. No, I think he did too, and that's probably you know that that uh, would have, you know, lended to the uh, the overall good look of the film. You know, it didn't it didn't feel like a TV movie to me. I guess. <laughs> Yeah, except for the limitations that gave it away. Other than that, it didn't. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. So the makeup is by Tom and William Tuttle. Oh, is that a, is that a name people do? Um, I feel like I should know that. Familiar, yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah, interesting, interesting, interesting. William uh, Tuttle was was a makeup artist um, of of some renown. Actually, he was at uh, MGM, supervised Wizard of Oz. I mean, wow. are we talking William Tuttle? Yeah. Yep. Oh, That's wow. one of them. Born in Logan's the Run, Young Frankenstein, Time Machine. Did a lot of Twilight Zone stuff. Um, Seven Faces. Uh, Doctor Lau. He got an Oscar for that. I think. There you go. So I wonder, are they father and son? Hmm. Thomas Tuttle. Let's see. Here. No, they aren't. Thomas Tuttle's nineteen eighteen. They would be brothers or something. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. He was. He did Cape Fear, the nineteen sixty two version on Golden Pond. Bronco Billy. Probably made up Jeffrey Lewis's butt. For... <laughs> <laughs> we need a little extra padding over here. <laughs> Along with brother William Tuttle, they both had long careers as makeup artists in the film. Younger brother. There you go. Ex-brother-in-law of Donna Reed. Was William Tuttle married to Donna Reed? Well, for two <laughs> years. All right. That Go always Tuttle. seems like a like a weird... Uh, Go Tuttles. A weird <laughs> thing to claim. All right. <laughs> well, there you go. I think, I think we've said enough about this. Uh, you can, it's in public domain. You can check it out just about anywhere you want. Uh, various degrees of quality. Uh, I think we are unanimous in recommending it for a watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so we'd love to hear from you and what you think about it. And 
especially if you have any fond memories of seeing it back in the day or on one of the many uh, VHS or Blu-ray or uh, DVD. I doubt it has it made the Blu-ray. I don't know. Um, but yeah, let us there know what was you think. a Blu-ray, but I don't. I haven't ordered it yet. Fair no, enough. I not ordered. I, I, mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> I thought somewhere I saw a whole bunch of uh, pictures of different Blu-rays, but maybe I'm thinking of a different movie. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, but speaking of feedback, oh. Jeff, do we have feedback today? I got I got uh, I got pictures off DVD Beaver from a Blu-ray. Uh, okay, it says Vinegar Syndrome. Vinegar oh. Syndrome. They do a good job with stuff. All right, they do a good job. Do we have feedback? Oh Lord, do we have feedback? Oh, do we All have right. time? We do. Okay. Unless unless you don't. No, no, no. I just don't, don't we don't we have something going on after this? But okay, we do. We do. All right, we're fine. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, right. all right. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Nobody knows what you're talking about. Episode 188 <laughs> Satanic Rates of Dracula. Who wants that one? Like I Cal. should take this one because they talk about me. Okay, John Fowler <laughs> says, and John, John Fowler's Fowler the guy that talked about his uh trying to, to, to school his son on Euro Gothic. Horror. Good man, you got raise your children well. John Fowler says, Hi, Gru Crew. I recently watched this late Hammer film and went to see if you guys covered it. I was glad to see you all did, and I had a somewhat similar reaction to it as you all. It was, first of all, great to see Lee and Cushing together for the last time in a Hammer Dracula film, but overall the film felt a bit cheap and almost like a TV film. Mm -hmm. That isn't to say I think it's bad or anything. <coughs> the acting was excellent. The story reasonably compelling, and the vampire brides in the basement relatively chilling, yet it's a far cry from the earlier gothic masterpieces like Horror of Dracula and the Brides of Dracula. Hell, I think Vampire Circus was far more hammer than Satanic Rites. I love Vampire Circus, by the way. Yeah. Ultimately, what really makes Satanic Rites work is Cushing and Lee. Without them, this would have been a mediocre vampire film and largely forgotten today. Also... I'm glad to see that Frozen Bill hasn't been emerging lately. Perhaps <laughs> Ghosts in the Machine? Well, I'm not too glad. Frozen Bill is rather hilarious when he appears. His cats might be up to naughty tricks. Best, John. Yes, I totally blame the cats. Appreciate well, it. Not, you're you're, you're going to have to watch uh, uh, the <laughs> latest uh, decades of horror yeah. 80s because he froze again on that one. So, no, yeah. there you go. Frozen uh, Bills keep keeps up here. Yeah, the gift that keeps on giving. All right, I got there's one for episode 205. Death game from Chris CL7HT. Chad. Chris says, I just watched it last night, Death Game, and I agree with all with y'all. It sucks. <laughs> I was sitting here confused about how a grown man can't fight back two women. Well, that that you know. I, Maybe I he really that. didn't want to. Mm, yeah, light yeah. Him up. might not have grown ass man. But I know a lot of women that could beat the crap out of me, and not because they're he's married to one bigger than me. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Two thousand two hundred fifteen episode. Don't be afraid of the dark. Doctor from Lone Wolf, and Lone Wolf is back, and he's hitting all the episodes. All right, right. Lone Wolf. This is for me, huh? All yeah. right. Lone Wolf says, thanks for discussing and reviewing this gem that always gets lost in the shuffle of horror. You guys had already talked about TV films such as Trilogy of Terror and Liz Borden. So I thought this um, might be added to the mix. Sadly. Yeah, I think he suggested it. Yep. One of them, yeah. Yes, I believe he did. Yeah. Sadly, I agree with you all. <laughs> this film isn't as effective as I remembered, but I still quite enjoyed taking a trip down memory lane. The USA Network played this during the afternoon on a week end in the early 90s. Oh, wow. I remember the strange, dark, grainy atmosphere vividly, and I watched a poor Kim Darby being terrorized by these impish, whimpering creatures. Impish. The ending, impish, 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 Jan. Uh, the ending left me confused, but I think it adds to the horror. You end up painting dark scenarios of what actually happens to her. And that makes me feel so uneasy. 
Darby also starred in two awful werewolf on campus flicks, Full Moon High and Teen Wolf 2. <laughs> Gross, he says. <laughs> I really enjoyed listening to all four of you guys on this one. The 70s were really special. Art. Yeah. Art emoji. <laughs> You know, I, we always kind of make assumptions, and I'm not I'm not saying one way or the other, but Lone Wolf could be female, too. That's true. True. Um, thank you very much, Lone Wolf. It's so glad to have you back. Absolutely. Episode 219, Who Could Kill a Child? Andy L. I think we're at Bill. Who Could Kill a Child? Andy L. Could. Not sure if someone already responded about this since I am lagging behind on my podcast punctuality as we had a few out-of-state events this summer that kept me otherwise busy. But the movie in which the young man becomes leader of the country and eventually puts everyone over 30 in enclosed encampments and then at the end is plotted against by very young preteens is Wild in the Streets from 1968, a dystopian drug-soaked fantasy film from another era. Pretty interesting cast, including Shelley Winters, Hal Holbrook, Ed Begley Sr., and even Richard Pryor. Wow. Yeah. And Christopher Jones, who's, who starred in the Jesse James TV show that was on in the in the couple years before that. And hmm. I, I know nobody knows who that is, but me. Anyway. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Sorry, <laughs> sorry with James Dean. Yeah, Richard sure. Pryor. It had Christopher Jones. Um, I haven't <laughs> seen it in many years, but did <laughs> did watch a few times when it came on TV back in the day. I'm not sure how well it would hold up today, but you would all probably have a good time watching it and flash back to the hippie days. Hippie days. Hippie days. The director of Who Can Kill a Child originally came to fame for this TV series in Spain. It is kind of his version of The Twilight Zone. Hitchcock presents Tales of the Unexpected, Ray Bradbury Theater, etc. I just started to watch it as the whole series is on Tubi. But since the first episode is an adaptation of Frederick Brown's story, The Birthday, and further episodes are based on Harlan Ellison, Ray Bradbury, Robert Block, etc., I thought that you would enjoy checking it out. They're in Spanish, but have English subtitles available. Historias para no dormir, 1966 to 1982, tales to keep you awake. Oh, wow. So if you look at that, because that sounds fascinating. Yeah, oh. it does. I, and I looked it up just to make sure the Historias para dormir. No Paranoid. The, the, the Spanish <laughs> title. The Spanish title is in Spanish, but right below it was "Tales to Keep You Awake." That's uh, got English subtitles. Um, but yeah, cool. I'm going to start watching that. And it's funny; it's 30 episodes, and they're spread out over 16 years. 16 years. That's uh, amazing. So that's, that's interesting. The first one, I don't know about all of them, but the first one was 28 minutes. Hmm. Um. So, yeah, I'm going to hit that. Thank you so much, Andy. He turns me on to so much stuff you wouldn't believe it. Uh, the Day of the Triffids series from like 1980 and the, you know, some of, some of the BBC stuff from the 50s and, you know, where we they're available. In a while. Stuff like from. that. So, all right. Thank you so much. Also on Who Can Kill a Child from Dallas Nostromo. Chad. Dallas says, never heard of this film before, but decided to give it a try due to your comments about it. I watched a very good copy on YouTube with English subtitles and really enjoyed it. Hmm. This is what I love most about your podcast, discovering films I've never heard of that are really good. Great podcast, gang. Love, Dallas. Thank Thanks, you, Dallas. Dallas. I'm Thank impressed, you. Dallas. That's no... No one-liners or anything. No, yeah. no jabs at Chad or anything. Yeah. I just, yeah. My heart warms. Mm. Okay, and episode two twenty, Snow Beast, from Lee Milner. Doc, you ready? Sure. Lee Milner says, "I remember seeing this in my in my youth." The parents. Oh, there it is. I, I remember seeing this in my youth on Friday night TV with my parents. Scared me back then, but I loved it. <laughs> Shame the group who didn't like it at all. <laughs> Frowny uh -huh. face. I still think it's enjoyable, even now. Thanks for giving me an excuse to rewatch it again. Happy face. Keep up the good work. Love the show. Thumbs up. <laughs> why you. am I getting? Why am I getting all the emoticons? Like, <laughs> appreciate it, Mr. Milner or Mr. Emoticons. Lee. Appreciate out. it, Lee. We don't know. Uh, and Lone Wolf on Snow Beast, and we're back at 
Bill, I don't know. Bill, do you want to skip them for your no, voice? Or no, I'm fine. Fine. Okay. okay. Especially Lone Wolf agrees with me and says, wow, worse than Fury of the Wolf Man? That's a new mm -hmm. record. Mm -hmm. Sylvia Sydney almost sounds like Sydney Sweeney, who I happen to love just as much as Jeff loves Clint Walker. Okay, <laughs> almost as much. Wow, love that's, you guys. That's an interesting comparison. <laughs> no beast, cool title, horrible movie. That sums it up. Yeah, pretty much. And then Dallas Nostromo on Snow Beast, who has and just I'm just saying the best name, Chad. Mm -hmm. Dallas says, years ago, I purchased a Sasquatch horror triple feature DVD, which included Snow Beast. Oh. You may or may not be surprised to know Snow Beast was not the worst film of the three films. <laughs> wow. Initially, I was excited to watch it as it starred Robert Logan, whom I was a big fan of from his Adventures of the Wilderness Family films. Oh. Although the film can be a little slow at times, it has some of the most realistic skiing <laughs> scenes I've ever seen. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it appears as though people are actually skiing. And the film oh, has some no. of the most realistic snow ever on film. <laughs> I just don't understand the hate some people have for this film. Enjoyed the podcast, no. though. Uh, Dallas, I mean, I mean, he's back like with me now. Yeah, nice to that. have you back, Dallas. <laughs> An episode, there was, there was a lot. <laughs> Hell of a lot of skin, but yeah. it was real. Very was realistic. Real. Uh, episode 222, brilliant. Nightwing from Perfect Mask. I have no idea, but uh, Doc? Is that... Oh, you want me to do that one? Sure. Uh, uh, again with the emojis. Chad's a wild child. Uh, that's cool, because, rad. That's because I had a... a Wasp T-shirt on, and that's one of their signature songs. Is wild. Oh, song. okay. Oh, yeah, there you go. Thank yeah. you. I'm glad you could put some mm -hmm. context to that. Uh, also, on Nightwing is Jose. Bill. Um, I've never seen this one, but I've read a lot about it, and I have a suite of Mancini conducting his own score. We have Datura that grows wild around here in the southeast. It's known by different names, but Southwest. Juice and Southwest. Oh, Southwest. Sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, you're right. It's known by different names, but Jimson weed is the most common. It contains a deadly alkaloid poison, and cows often die if they eat the plant. If a cow has no chance, what chance do we have? Oh, true. That said, every year, people poison themselves after hearing it's a hallucinogen. The plant has beautiful white trumpet-shaped flowers, but beware. See, that's, that's natural selection in action there. Yeah. Frankly, there's not enough of it. Well, we were trying to figure out what it was he was eating, he, and the, the the word was unfamiliar, so I never did pick up on what it was he was saying. So Jimson I, weed. I appreciate that, Jose. Uh, and Gregory Crosby, Chad. Mr. Gregory says, after listening to this, I realized I saw this, Alien, and Prophecy in the theaters the year they came out. God, one was indelible. One was laughable. One, this one. I'd completely forgotten about. <laughs> Why did he laugh at Alien? <laughs> I... <laughs> you don't know Gregory like we know Gregory. <laughs> and then one from Scott Wells, uh, Doc. Oh, dear. Scott says, haven't listened to the episode yet because I'm catching up on the Night Stalker podcast. Thank you. Yes, we have Night Stalker. Yeah, yeah, yeah English. Yeah, my first language. Uh, we have the Night Stalker podcast uh, for patron only, uh, covering all 20 episodes. Thank you for the plug. This movie is a guilty pleasure of mine, or maybe not so guilty. I love it, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. When I was growing up, my parents didn't really let me go to theater all that much. Sometimes it was because money was short. A lot of times it was because of the film ratings. I don't recall their reason for this one, but it was probably money. I would uh, always go to a library and check out the recently released paperbacks for anything in the genre that I was interested in and look for the cover reading, now a major motion picture, <laughs> and immediately check it out. That's how I first got an experience with Alien, Dead and Buried, and of course, Nightwing. Uh, love the killer bat movie. 
Uh, but add in Native American mysticism, David Warner, and sticking it to major corporations, <laughs> you don't have to sell it so hard. I was I was in with the bats. <laughs> yeah, Scott's into the perfect different religions, and also on Nightwing, Robert Baker. We had a lot of a lot of comments on Nightwing. Hmm. Um, yeah, Bill. Who knew? Who knew? Me? Yep. Um, yep. What I remember vividly about this movie was seeing the poster back at the time as a kid. I thought it was a straight up vampire movie. Later, when I saw it, I thought it was an enjoyable nature run amok film. Pure 70s, and that's always going to be all right with me. Also figured the movie Bats back in the 90s was perhaps ah. inspired by this film. Yeah, I agree. I like Bats. Yeah, I haven't perhaps. seen it in a while, but I enjoyed it. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. And Dallas. We got Chad again. Oh. Oh. Dallas says, Nightwing is one of those films that on paper should be good. It was made in the 70s, which is my favorite decade for horror. It's a nature run amok film, which is one of my favorite subgenres. And it has a solid cast. When you put all that together, what do you get? Well, with this film, you get boring. <laughs> <laughs> I've only seen they this film you. twice, and the second time was in preparation for this podcast. And both times I found myself bored. I felt the bat attack scenes aren't very interesting, and the story just kind of plods along with no real tension. Again, this is a film that should be right up my alley, but it's a swing and a miss for me. At least I enjoyed listening to you all talk about it, though. <laughs> Love, Dallas. Thank you, oh, Dallas. Appreciate it, Dallas. Thanks so much. <laughs> We're almost to the end. Uh, episode 223, that just went live today. Oh, wow, just today. Holy cow. That's re as we're recording. 79, and I don't know where we're at. It's After me. Chad is wow. not. Um, Emilus79 says, about craze. Jack Palance always looks good. No, always looks loopy. Ha <laughs> uh, ha! Or on the verge of killing somebody in these films. I guess he didn't have to act much. Oh. <laughs> I, I thought the same thing. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yep. Oh, and oh, hello, Bill. <laughs> Bill. Lisa Li1JD. Lisa Li1JD says, I totally agree with Bill. I'm just going to stop right That's there. It. <laughs> you can't improve on perfection. I totally agree with Bill that even low budget British films have an extra bit of class that the American counterparts don't. Also, love the horror attire, Doc and Jeff. Last but not least, Chad, you are the goat, as the kids say, which I think stands for greatest of all time. But you uh, might actually mean that you're like a goat. But then there's a know. monkey emoji. I Either way, I'm mean. good. <laughs> What's the monkey? Yeah, there's emoji? a monkey and then a uh, smiley face with hearts. So she likes goats. So I think Doc had a uh, Kolchak t shirt on, and I had my Universal Horror. Hawaiian shirt on. And yeah. Chad had the hair on his chinny chin chin. So oh, that makes sense. He's uh, a goat sharp, and, sharp and uh, smiley sharp face. Love. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank we you, Lisa. It. Thank you, everybody. And then I did get an email back quickly from uh, this person that had commented. And uh, I wanted to read this because this is the kind of stuff that really makes mm. me uh, it's you love, love doing this, I guess. Yeah. It's just a general comment. And I'm not going to use his name. I just thought I would take the time to send out a personal message. And once again, thank you folks for doing a downloadable podcast. I had an extreme medical emergency this past Wednesday, had trouble breathing that morning and knew something was terribly wrong. Went to the emergency room and quickly discovered I had several blood clots in both of my lungs. Oh, wow. Closest I have ever been to dying because one clot was about to go into the heart. Oof. After a literal ambulance ride against death to another hospital that was better equipped, I was rushed into emergency surgery. Did fine, thank you, thankfully. But it was so nice to already have past shows saved to my phone so I could have something I enjoyed listening to through the following chaos of a few days in the hospital. <laughs> One of my nurses turned out to be a big horror fan as gruesome uh, as well. And after hearing snippets of the show, he looked Gruesome Magazine up and bookmarked the show to start listening as well. Thanks for doing the shows and also putting them on Libsyn. It helped to have easy access at an unexpected rough time. Got home yesterday and nice to hear the show in far better surroundings again. Oh, wow. Well, that's, um, you made it glad glad oh, you're doing better. Yeah. yeah, and I told him, uh, you know, I replied and said, 
damn it's we're so happy you came through it okay um and selling the podcast while you're at it he says <laughs> evidently i'm hard to kill like any good monster there you <laughs> so, go uh so we love shell we've got a we've had a couple of comments like that recently they're just so mm. heartwarming and uh tug at the tug at the heartstrings so we re- yeah. we appreciate that we uh, love our fans yeah if that doesn't energize you to keep going that's right you know so that's it for this episode. Thanks to everyone. There's too many. I'm not going to go through there. I, I'll miss somebody, but uh, Lone Wolf in Dallas and Jose and uh, Andy, Lisa, Andy, Andy, Robert Baker, <laughs> Scott Wells, Gregory Crosby. Good gosh. Perfect mask. I'm <laughs> not going to go, I'm not gonna go back through these again. Lee Milner. And then I started to anyway. To that's again. my brain. I can't help it. <laughs> Chris uh, and John Fowler. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Once that nugget once that nugget got in there, it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't yeah. coming free. Started rolling. What kind of uh, nugget it is, I won't say. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, let's prepare for our next episode in two weeks. It is Bill's pick. Uh, Bill, what is the name of this movie you've picked? This is a little Euro trash nudity, Euro. lovely photography, and I don't know. It's it's been a while since I've seen it, so let's see if it holds up. It is vampires with a Y. <laughs> okay, nineteen seventy four. Uh, yep. It it is not who I was who I thought it was directed by. It's actually directed by Jose Ramon Laraz. Laraz. La- Copious yeah, amounts of nudity. It's copious. Well, this is, what are you guys? What's going on here, Bill? What do you got to do on next week? Well, <laughs> you know, a little tea. This is stuff you wouldn't. This is not a TV movie. It would be a very short. TV it is movie. not. As I believe this came COVID. up in our uh, discussion of Daughters of Darkness. If I remember, yes, mm-hmm. yeah, it's yeah. got some similarities. Mm. It's going to be fun. A, a change of pace from this this gem. That's for sure. Well, it's right true. now, this is uh, <laughs> streaming on Wicked Horror TV, Classic Horror Movie Channel, Tubi, Arrow, and Flix Fling. Flix Fling, Flix Fling, Flix Fling. Who flung down? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. Dude. We're done. <laughs> Oh, we better get out of here before it just continues with that strange path there. Uh, thank you all for joining me. This was a ton of fun. Jeff, Bill, Chad, you guys are awesome. Well, thank, thank you, you. sir. So so are you. You. Thank you very much. Thanks to the uh, listeners, too. Uh, just so cool. Absolutely. Yeah, all right, let's go. Send more listen. feedback. Yeah. More. Send more. Send more paramedics. Um, all right, that's a that's a different movie. Different movie. All right, <laughs> let's get out of here. Let's say good night. Good night. Good night, good night everybody. <laughs>